the text data we collect often expresses some emotion. Imagine you have collected a bunch of text data, say from tweets or reviews or by doing a survey. You have all sorts of emotions being expressed in all kinds of ways. Take this made up example. Imagine we have performed a survey on students who have studied data science. The field of sentiment analysis aims to automate reading the text and extracting the emotions. If we assign a score of plus one to the most positive possible sentiment and negative one for the most negative, we might assign the following scores to these sentences. We want to figure out how to do this systematically and then how to get a computer to do it for us. Some definitions before we start. Sentiment is the use of NLP methods to quantify the affect of a text. The word affect in this context means the emotion that is expressed by the text. The simplest type of sentiment analysis just assigns a label to a piece of text, say zero for negative and one for positive. Generally, these labels are learned by running a machine learning algorithm on a big labeled data set. This is not a machine learning course, but we'll show how to make a simple sentiment classifier using NLTK. The first thing we need is training data. NLTK has a movie review data set, 2000 movie reviews categorized as positive or negative. This code loads them into a list. Note that we mix them up in the end. This will be convenient when we come to split the corpus into training and test data. We are calling a function called clean review, which is our text cleaning pipeline, so we better define it. There's a lot going on here, but it's mostly stuff we've seen before. This is a text cleaning part. In summary, it removes stop words, digits, lower cases, removes punctuation, removes white space, and then removes words with three or fewer characters and lemmatizes the remaining words. We keep a counter of all the valid words in the corpus and then return a set of all the unique words in that document. Next, we define a vector representation for each document. We're only going to look at the top 2000 most common words in the corpus. So our vectors will be 2000 dimensional. This function returns a dictionary with all of the top 2000 words and the value true or false, depending on if that word is in the document or not. We apply that function to each review to turn it into a feature vector. The output of the to feature vector function looks something like this. We then append the review valence, positive or negative, inside a tuple. This code uses a 2080 train test split to train the classifier and compute the classification accuracy. We get something like 75%, which is not too bad. The exact number will vary depending on the random seed you use when you shuffle the dataset. The classifier can tell us which words are most indicative of positive and negative reviews. For example, the word cheesy is associated with around 10 times as many negative reviews as positive, while the word nomination is more likely to be seen in positive reviews. Note that this classifier is trained on reviews. The reviews in the training set are quite long, spanning multiple paragraphs. It turns out that this classifier performs quite badly on short texts. The code tests the classification of the very short review, terrific, excellent, a wonderful and amazing movie. This is the output. It's classified as negative with quite high probability. This is a warning to always use a machine learning method on the same kind of data it was trained with, in this case, fairly long text. An alternative to machine learning is to use a rule-based approach. This is similar in spirit to how the stemming algorithms worked. We basically know enough about English that we can apply some rules of thumb to figure out if a sentence is positive or negative. We need two things for this, a sentiment lexicon and some rules for interpreting sentences. We'll look at the extremely popular Vader algorithm for rule-based sentiment analysis. The algorithm is public and implemented in Python, so we'll look at the actual code. Don't be afraid to do this. The libraries you use are all written by human beings. Here's a random snippet from the sentiment lexicon. We see a lot of words and some scores next to each one. The second column is the average sentiment score for each word. The third column is a standard deviation, and the final column shows the scores given by each human rater who rated the words on a scale from minus four for the most negative to plus four for the most positive. The code consists of a number of rules for combining these scores in the dictionary we just looked at. For example, here are the negation words, which negate the score of a word. If supportive has a score of plus 1.2, then not supportive is minus 1.2. Here is part of the booster dictionary. This increases the sentiment of words. So completely supportive will get a higher score than just supportive. There are other rules like a higher score for text written in all caps and rules for emojis and emoticons. We should now have a flavor of how it works. Using Vader is simple. We install it, import it, and then compute the polarity scores. This is the output. We get a negative score, a neutral score, a positive score, and the so-called compound score, which is usually the one you want to look at. Comparing the first two sentences, we see the exclamation mark has made the score for that sentence slightly more positive. The adverb really has boosted the score even more. The last sentence, as expected, is negative. However, it's easy enough to fool Vader. Take this sentence. The active volcano erupted near the town. According to Vader, it's quite a positive sentence. The reason is that the word active usually has a positive connotation, just not in the context of volcanoes. Sentiment analysis is an active and ongoing area of research. Neither NLTK nor Vader are state-of-the-art, but both are still commonly used and given insight into the use of sentiment analysis and also its pitfalls. If you use sentiment analysis in your own work, be aware that it isn't perfect and should usually just be one part of a larger analysis pipeline.